Hi, this is your host Optin Parthi and we are here at Open Source Summit in Austria and today we have with us once again Anna Hermanson, researcher at LF Research at the Linux Foundation. Anna, it's great to have you back on the show. Great to be here. Thanks, Fa. Yeah, I mean, you, you do so many research, you know, that I talk to you almost on a monthly basis. So what kind of research are you working on right now? What are the research that we are going to talk about today? Yeah, we've been running a lot of projects this year, a lot of survey-based research. Um, one that is particularly close to my heart is the research that I've been working on in the healthcare space, looking at how do we incorporate open source into that sector to make it more interoperable, easier to use, more efficient. And um, it is an area where we don't actually see a lot of open source representation. Um, we don't have many healthcare providers or healthcare players at the Linux Foundation. And so we decided to run this research. It's been going on for a number of months now, and we're about to wrap up that report. Now, when you look at healthcare, you know, this is also one of the heavily regulated industry. You know, you have a lot of, you know, regulations there. Uh, what kind of potential do you see of open source in this? Because it seems like this is the ideal place because you do want a lot of transparency there. Yeah, absolutely. We In the report, we discussed the different challenges that the sector sees and the, the perceptions of open source in this space. And I think it is an area that is so highly regulated. It's become such a complex sector for innovation. You have so many different stakeholders um, that have competing interests, whether that's financial, you know, um, from a health and safety perspective, from a privacy perspective. Um, and so to incorporate uh, even basic technological innovations, we see healthcare is always the laggard in this space. What took you folks so long to work on something like that? What were the challenges which kind of either you're like, this is, this, this is not the right time for the report or what are things that change that you feel this is the right time to do this report? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to uh, overshadow or not mention the work that's being done in this space. We have a lot of different, uh, a lot of people actually came to me and said, I'm working on an open source project in the healthcare space. We had a Linux Foundation department called LF Public Health um, that was quite, um, uh, came up around the time of, of COVID um, to support the different softwares being used in that space for COVID tracking. And so we see a lot of different work being done in this space, but I, what's interesting and what has come out of this is that there's no kind of cohesive effort, at least at the Linux Foundation, uh, to bring that work together. I came on to the research portfolio two years ago and I came from a, a master's degree in public health. And so I took up the mantle of wanting to learn more about why the Linux Foundation doesn't have this kind of cohesion and, and you know, whether or not 2024 is the right year to, to start an initiative like this. And so I think it's, it has been interesting writing this research and having people come to me and say, I'm really interested in this. Um, I want to participate. So definitely it seems like a, a hot topic as, as always in this space. Can you talk about the process methodology behind this specific report? So we, uh, I worked with a close collaborator, Irving Vladowski Berger at uh, MIT as an affiliate there. And he, he is also very interested in this topic and why um, health data is so uninteroperable. And so we started brainstorming different people we could speak to in this space. Um, you know, he has a lot of contacts. And so we, uh, we started with interviews, uh, hour long interviews over Zoom, asking experts in this space uh, whether or not they know about open source applications in healthcare. Uh, what the perceptions are of open source in this sector, what the challenges are, whether or not that's specific, specifically with open source adoption or generally speaking with data interoperability. And so we collated a lot of uh, qualitative data. Uh, and from there, I analyzed those transcripts and built out themes around that provides kind of a landscape of, of what the challenges are. How do we you know, resolve these conflicts between open source perceptions and the value of open source? And then ultimately, um, you know, what are some recommendations or uh, next steps that we can take so that uh, we can we can have more of a cohesive unit around healthcare and push that open source uh, mandate and value proposition in this sector? And what kind of folks or organization did you talk to? So we spoke to mainly technologists in the healthcare space. Um, we spoke to some individuals at um, different providers across the United States. Uh, we spoke to academics, um, spoke to individuals in Europe. We tried to get a global view of this challenge as um, people 
most likely know that there are different countries with very different healthcare uh, systems. All of these systems seem to have this data issue, um, some more prominently than others. And so we, we spoke to individuals in the US who are working on this issue. We spoke to a lot of Canadians um, who are working on data interoperability and open source and um, individuals in the UK and across Europe as well. And um, individuals in India as well who are working on um, kind of these open source building blocks in the healthcare sector, which was a really interesting conversation. I remember a couple of years ago, I talked to uh, Sanat and his ch son had a rare disease. So, and he worked on a project and you know, Linux Foundation also brought So did also, that, that also played any role in this project? Yeah, actually, when I first started the Linux Foundation, I spoke to Mike Dolan, and he told me about this project RareCamp, um, which is a project that is tracking uh, health data for rare genetic diseases. And that was actually an area that I was very interested in my master's degree. And so um, it, it, I am actually speaking to Sanath in a couple days, and we're going to talk more about this RareCamp project and where he sees the open source community in this specific sector of um, you know, genetic rare diseases where we desperately need this data. We have people um, who are very uh, welcoming towards sharing their data in this space, but those kind of structures and, and processes in place are, aren't in place to do that. Now let's talk about some of the findings. Now, when I am talking about findings, which could also mean that it will also provide a lot of resources to actually move, the, push the envelope in the direction where healthcare providers can start embracing open source? Yeah, so I mean, the report it kind of turned into a landscape project of um, understanding the state of the, the health sector and the data interoperability issues that exist in this sector. And, um, you know, also to give a, an overview of where is open source being used in the sector and what some perceptions are of, of open source. and. Um, I would say the, the key findings of this research are really to showcase um, you know, where those gaps are and what the Linux Foundation can do in terms of next steps to build out a research initiative that, or a, a health initiative that can support these you know, various different open source projects such as RareCamp um, and bring those together to form more of a cohesive unit around um, healthcare. I would say one of the main topics that came up in our discussions was building out an open source uh, architecture similar to the the 5G super blueprint, which is on the Linux Foundation website. You can go take a look at that. But the, um, the telco space uh, came together. A lot of competitors came together to build a blueprint so that um, individuals that are working in the sector can know kind of where their solution plugs into this landscape. And so healthcare doesn't have that right now. You have startups that build a solution for a specific context. They try and bring it to another context, and that it fails because that the other context isn't set up to to use and to integrate with that solution. And so, if we build out an architecture, then everyone is kind of operating on that same pre-competitive protocol, and we can have these solutions plug in much more effectively and not as a, as a loss to innovation, where we see innovations only working in a specific context right now. If you look at like just industry wide, you know, uh, there are certain industries which are kind of slow when it comes to it. Like fin, you know, fintech is a you know financial you know, but Finos is a project. You know, it depends on when you talk to Gab how he wanted to pronounce Finos, Finos. You know, depends on that. And I feel that healthcare is also in the same space. Uh, when you work on this report, uh, what are some of the hurdles that you see that these also this is also an industry which has been around for a very long time, you know. Uh, also, it is also very well regulated, but also it's not, there are some, some few companies, you know, it's kind of monopolies are there, in, if, if that is the right term, so, uh, right or wrong term. So can you also talk about what are the hurdles uh, that this industry faces? Uh, because, I mean, people see the value of open source, but there are some genuine reasons also that they cannot that quickly move. Yeah, so I would say the one of the biggest hurdles in this space is is regulation. Um, there's a lot of uh, regulation that exists to keep people healthy and even alive. You know, there's this uh, incredibly risk adverse industry that is kind of a, afraid of building out a solution if it um, doesn't really benefit the patient, and that risk taking um, is 
is quite unique to healthcare. The financial services sector has important risks, but it's not necessarily a life or death situation. And so um, you can definitely compare some of the work in healthcare to financial services in terms of data privacy and that kind of collaboration amongst competitors. Um, and so, but I would say the, the risk aversion of the industry is a huge challenge um, to innovation. Uh, I would also say that the, uh, as you say, the monopolies or the, what we call in the report, these, in, these incumbent electronic health record uh, providers, um, you know, they have a lot of market power. They have a lot of reasons to keep that data within their systems, to keep um, healthcare providers and patients locked into those systems to continue to make money off of those uh, licenses. And so the, you know, we see in a, in a number of different countries, Canada and the US in particular, this consolidation around these incumbents, which have more and more market power um, and are not interested in, in open source. And so there's challenges that are unique to healthcare, but there's also challenges that we see you know, in many other industries. And I believe the, that kind of risk aversion is what makes this industry such a laggard. But um, I mean, the open source perceptions in this space, as we were building them out on the report, are very familiar. You know, like if whether open source is commercially viable, um, there's no vendor support around it. So we had a lot of what we called misperceptions that um, I think you know, as, as our research tries to do, we can educate better on the value of open source and why it actually fits so well with that open science ethos of healthcare um, and, and produce an, an initiative that better supports open source adoption in this space. Do you think that when a sector goes through their own digitization or digital transformation, when they are changing the software stack, then they look at the next thing and then so open source become a viable solution versus when they are like running those legacy systems and no change is needed, then no change is needed. Yeah. Do you see that also plays a role? I think so. I mean, if talking to the, to the interviewees, we saw a lot of people say, you know, we're at this one, one interview used the word uh, or used the term information dark ages where we lack the information to be able to share it and to have people such as the Rare Camp Project, you know, have people make drug discoveries um, and, you know, diagnoses. And so I think the, you know, this digitization happened more in the beginning of the 20, uh, uh, in the 2000s, at least in the US and Canada. We had this digitization of health records and I think as we move more into um, the 21st century and we have, uh, you know, very prominent uh, news stories and prominent issues come out in the healthcare space where we have such a need for, for better resourcing and for more efficient systems. Um, I, you know, I, I think the open source value proposition becomes more and more attractive. And especially with, you know, we, we see this across different industries. AI is such a big piece of the healthcare puzzle and it's already providing so much benefit, particularly in the automation uh, space and also a bit in, in detection of, of diagnoses as well. And so uh, in one of, one of the sections of the report, we discuss AI as a catalyst for, you know, are we, we're at this point where AI can produce so much good in the healthcare space and yet AI needs data, and as anyone in the healthcare industry knows, or anyone who's engaged in you know a healthcare service, which is everyone in the world, uh, you know, data is really lacking in this space. And so, the hope maybe is that AI produces this this push for greater data sharing and data accessibility. And uh, as we know from the work we've done across industries, open source provides that kind of solution. So that's the hope. Was this report just focusing on the North American market or it was global? It was global. I would say given my network and the Linux Foundation's network. Which is, which is global. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we spoke to a number of Canadians uh, and Americans, but we also made sure that we received some European representation um, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we have all these different healthcare systems that operate in very different ways. And so it was really important for us to make sure that we captured more of a global perspective and, and the work that's being done around the world. There's also a huge push um, in the developing uh, countries 
to incorporate open source into the healthcare, their healthcare systems. And so um, it was really fascinating speaking to indiv the two individuals out of India and the work they're doing um, on the identification system and how that plays into the healthcare sector and how all of these tools are open source and the government mandate was to go open source. And so um, definitely a lot of learning from developing countries as we've seen in other sectors. But uh, yeah, we did aim for a global perspective. And the reason I asked that question was also that, have you also seen a contrast where certain regions in the world, they are more pro open source versus certain regions which are still legacy? Did you see any? Yeah, absolutely. Between the developing and developed countries, uh, we spoke to an individual who works closely in the space and more generally in the public sector um, and he pointed out the adoption that they're seeing of a software called uh, or a, a kind of group of a technology called open EHR um, and the uh, open MRS and how these uh, electronic health record solutions that are open source are being implemented in uh, developing countries and for reasons that I think make sense to individuals that know open source, you know, we know that open source reduces costs. We know that open source, uh, as the individual I spoke to in India, the term he used was, um, you know, de-risks innovation. And so you can start a project uh, quite quickly without going into all of the costs that come with starting something from scratch. Um, and then there's also, of course, all of this vendor support with open source. And so these different countries, um, you know, that don't necessarily have that entrenched market player, like a Cerner or an Epic that are already in that system, um, that are looking for solutions and need solutions quickly, uh, are turning to open source solutions. So we've definitely seen that and is talked about in the report. No, the report is done and as we have often talked, these reports are less about collecting what it is, but also to kind of build a strategy as well, how to use this information to build something. So talking about how are you going to use this report to actually bring the change that is needed? Yeah, so we, the, as I mentioned, the, the point of this report was to understand the state of open source in the healthcare sector. We run a, a lot of reports on that state of open source in different industries. And so the idea with the report was to provide this understanding of where open source uh, exists in healthcare where it's got challenges and opportunities and so um, the the kind of finale of the report is recommendations and, and next steps for for our community and so the hope with this report is to circulate it to have individuals read it uh, those in this in the healthcare space can um, you know reach out to us and we can start to build more of a ground up momentum around all of these different really important open source healthcare projects and, and where we see uh, you know, areas where collaboration is most important so that we're not reinventing the wheel, but we're hearing from our community on what is the best next step that the Linux Foundation can take to bring these groups together to answer these you know, um, sector-wide challenges and to, to actually move, move the needle in this space. And uh, once again, thank you so much for joining me today to talk about another great report there. And as usual, I look forward to talking to you again when you work on the next report. Yeah. But I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much, Slot. Nice to see you.